Let's, last week we got a lot of um, we got a lot of chatter online about some of the things we talked about, but right. one conversation in particular really stuck out, and people were talking about it, and it was about the idea of Shane McMahon possibly working with AEW. And if you recall on the program, you said it's so crazy to think it might work, depending on how depending on how it was positioned or how it was introduced. Right. Shane called me the other day. He's called two or three times, which I really appreciate. He's always been sensitive in that respect. That's yeah. only a question that Shane could answer. Shane and Tony being together, how would that work creatively? Heck, who knows? It might be great. And I saw a few fans, one in particular, who thought this was the most ridiculous thing he'd ever heard. And one guy in particular <laughs> said, JR's fucking senile now. And I took issue with that. <laughs> yeah, he is. And, and I engaged a little bit with that. Yeah. And there was a, a friend of ours, I'll say, I shouldn't say their name, but he went out of his way to text me and say, Hey, uh, that's not as crazy as you think. I know for oh. sure that Shane McMahon has reached out to wrestlers on the AEW roster to at least hypothetically discuss the idea. Now, are we All saying right. that's going to happen? No, but we are saying it's not that crazy of an idea. Uh, it could happen. It could happen. Right. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It could happen. And how he could be utilized as a character on television, that's what I'm talking about, is uh, is viable. I mean, you know, he's got great name identity. He's got people who recognize him. Uh, so, hell, I don't know. I would say it's a long shot, less than 50-50, that he yeah. would re-engage in pro wrestling. But I can't say that it's impossible because it isn't. So, so, uh, and he's a good guy and, and, uh, he, he still loves the business. I'm, you know, he, he called while I, my last hospital stay, he, he stayed right on top of it and he's a sensitive guy. He takes after his mother. Uh, and, uh, that's a good thing she, cause she's a nice lady. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's, he's just, uh, he's out there. He's out there. So, I mean, who would have thought? Who'd have thought, who'd have thunk it as they say. Uh, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's anything that's un, un, that we're unable to do. Uh, it can be done. It just depends on what he wants to do. Does he want to get back in the business, uh, or no. And uh, time will tell as far as that's concerned, I'm not advocating it happen yay or nay, but to say that it's impossible. It's just silly. Uh, it would not be true. It's, it is silly. Anything is possible yes. in this crazy business. Yes. Uh, if, if we've learned nothing else over the last few years, it's never say never. That's right. Uh, speaking of never say never, we saw something kind of crazy happen at the end of Monday night raw this week. And I know we don't normally talk about current WWE stuff, but I do at least want to bring this up because they went way out there and they went really creative and it was an interesting visual. And I know there's been a lot of talk and a lot of chatter online about it. I wanted to see what you thought about the return of, I guess, what used to be the Wyatt family. And now it's the Wyatt six S I C K S. It looks like uh, the former Bo Dallas is going to be uncle howdy. And we're getting one of the old bludgeon brothers back. Big red is there. And but what do you make of, did you get a chance to see the segment? And, and, and what do you think of this over the top presentation that we saw? I saw highlights of it. I did. Uh, I think it's going to be challenging to, to make it work. Uh, the Bray Wyatt cast a massive shadow and he was amazingly talented. Uh, the new group doesn't have anybody that to me, and I don't mean to be coarse or catty, uh, but Bray Wyatt can't be replaced. So the more that WWE can make this new group different. Uh, the better off they'll be, but to try to emulate and to, to replicate, you know, step by step, is going to be really challenging. That's like saying, well, we'll get another ball guy with a goatee and right. that can do a stunner and he'll be Austin. Well, it don't work that way. It just does not work that way. So, I mean, Hey, look, I'm all for those guys get, being successful and doing well. Uh, you know, again, it's all about the business and guys get an opportunity to provide better for their families, which I'm all for all for, but it's, I think it's going to be challenging. We got to talk a little bit about, um, 
the other news and notes from the week. But before we do, we should mention that as we're recording, last night was episode three of Who Killed WCW. And I think episode one just sort of laid the groundwork about, you know, where WCW was when, when, you know, the whole acquisition happened from Jim Crockett promotions and how they got up and going and and started nitro. And well, episode two was maybe, Hey, essentially did Eric Bischoff kill WCW and episode three, in my opinion, felt like, Hey, did Vince Russo kill WCW? Uh, what'd you make of episode three last night where it was heavily discussed this, uh, Russo and WCW experiment. I enjoyed the show. Uh, it was well edited, well produced. Uh, I'd, I'd encourage anybody that's a wrestling fan to, to go find it, check it out. Uh, I don't know that this question has an answer, a right answer who killed WCW. I don't know how you can anoint one or two people. Uh, as your culprits of that assassination, uh, just don't, uh, there may not be a right answer. I don't think it was Eric, uh, he was surrounded by incompetence. I don't know if it was Bishop or excuse me, uh, Russo, uh, because he was in a tough spot. Look to the top of the, of the food chain there, Brad Siegel and things like that, the, just being able to make decisions, educated decisions. And, uh, it, that was hard for a businessman to do because you got to have product knowledge and Brad Siegel, nice guy, but he did some things and, and, uh, uh, you know, he, it was hard to determine where he set, where his loyalties were to me. Uh, so I just don't know if there's a right answer, Connie, as, as to who killed and, and why do we have to have somebody uh, how, why does somebody have to be, uh, appointed the, the, the execution executioner or the, or, or whatever, uh, I, I'm just, we, we run to the, we run to find fault. And that seems to be very topical nowadays. And, uh, I don't know that anybody was total, any one person was totally at fault. But as these episodes go on, people can make their own determination as to what they think happened and who was, uh, who was, uh, in, who was, uh, uh, you know, the culprit. It's just hard to put all that pressure on one person. And I haven't seen any one person yet on those shows that would convince me that that person, this entity was at fault. I just have it. I, uh, I can't wait for episode four and, uh, I hope you guys will check it out. I want you to support all this wrestling content so we can get more of it. It airs Tuesday nights on vice 10 Eastern nine central and, uh, Eric Bischoff and I go live on YouTube right after to discuss what we saw in that episode. how did that go? It was fantastic. You know, our, we've had a good time there sort of recapping the shows and getting some live interactive questions. And you can join us next Tuesday night at 83weeks.com.